Hello everyone, hope you are learning well. So in this video, we'll discuss the third problem of lead code weekly contest 362. Uh, yeah, it's a, again a medium level problem. Let's see what it is asking us to do. So the problem name is minimum moves to spread stones over grid. Okay. So you are given a zero indexed 2D integer matrix grid of size three cross three. Okay. Representing the number of stones in each cells in each cell. Okay. The grid contains exactly nine stones and there can be multiple stones in a single cell. In one move, you can move a single stone from its current cell to any other cell if the two cells share a side. Okay. Return the minimum number of moves required to place one stone in each cell. Like this is a configuration, right? So it's a three cross three matrix. The total number of cells in this is nine and the total number of stones also uh, in this matrix is in is nine right so initially it's possible that one cell has more than uh, what do you call it one stone and some of them has zero stones okay our aim is to make them one everything one okay and how can we make it by transferring stones how do we transfer it we can only transfer that like from this cell to this cell i can only transfer if they share a common edge they share a common edge. Okay. That means from this position, you can go up, down, left or right, not diagonal. Okay. You cannot do like, go like this because these two share a common corner, not a side. Okay. So now let's look into this example. Okay. So we have to find the minimum number of moves, right? To do so. Okay. So here is a two. Now this is one, 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 one. Okay. So that's simple, right? That's simple. All we need to do is we need to transfer one stone from here to here right now actually how this will happen this is index number two comma one right so what we can do we can transfer one stone from here to here so now this guy will have two stones okay then what we can do we can transfer one stone from here to here so this will again have one stone this will have two stone till now i have done two moves and now i can transfer one stone from here to here this will have one stone this will have one stone so now every one Every cell has one stone, right? Every cell has one stone each. So there are three moves. Now let's explore some other possibilities as, as well. What happens? So the other possibilities, I transfer one stone from here to here, then from here to here, then from here to here. Again, there are three moves. What are other possibilities? One move, two move, three move, four move, five move, right? Now, obviously, as I said, there could be multiple options, but you have to tell the option which has minimum number of moves, right? So in short, if I say, in short, if I say that I have to transfer a stone from one cell to other cell, then I can do something like this. Okay. The number of cells that I have that I have to visit in this direction. Okay. The number of cells that I have to visit in, in this direction plus the number of cells I have to visit in this direction. That is simply the sum of absolute difference of their X coordinates and Y coordinates. Right. Let's see that. This is 0, 1, 2. This is 0, 1, 2. How many cells do I need to cover in this direction, in horizontal direction? So this y coordinate is 2, x coordinate is 1. So 2 minus 1. That means you need to travel one unit of one unit distance here. Obviously, then only you'll be able to come in this column, right? Now, how many distance you how much how many cells do you need to cover in the vertical direction? That is difference in their <coughs> sorry, y coordinates, right? So this will be this is like y or x whatever you consider like it totally depends on you the row number i can say it's a matrix right so forget about x and y coordinate it is matrix so this is row number column number so initially i subtract the column numbers to come in the same column and then i have to subtract the row numbers this is row number zero this is row number two so the absolute difference is two minus zero that is two only okay so this this is two this is one so two plus one is three what I mean to say to transfer one stone from here to here, you just need to find the sum of absolute difference of their X coordinates and Y coordinates. Simple, right? In this case, we already, uh, we have already seen how this stone can be transferred. Let's see this example. Okay. Now, one, two, three, four, four cells are there, which need stone, right? Now, one, two, three, these three need not be touched right they have one stone finally also they need to have one stone right now what are the possibilities this particular guy okay can get a stone either from here or from here similarly this particular guy can get a stone from here or from here 
similar for this case similar for this case right these are the four options these are the options what i mean to say <clears throat> number of cells which have zeros and number of cell which have some extra stones okay each zero cell can have these many possibilities have these many possibilities so what i'll do i'll generate all the possibilities and i'll just find the answer in every case for example suppose this cell receives a stone from here so how much uh, how many steps do i need only one step why because the difference of their y coordinate is 0 x coordinate is 1 so one step right however if this guy receives a stone from here i need two steps all right similar is the case here if this guy receives a stone from here two steps and from here just one step this guy only one step this one two steps this guy two steps from here also two steps from here also okay so what i'll do <coughs> it is something like this one two three four i have four zeros okay and i have two cells which have extra position let's call them e so this guy will have e possibilities this guy will have e possibilities e possibilities e possibilities so it would be the number of empty cells to the power this is empty or zero cell to the power number of extra cells this is the time complexity getting it simple this is the time complexity so what we will do in this case this is as i told this is a brute force approach that will will be uh, following in this case because the constraints are low so what we can do we can generate all the possibilities and we can backtrack right since we have to generate all the possibilities why do we need to backtrack just see let's see this you you should have some basic idea about backtracking then only you will understand the solution it will be tough for me to explain the you know uh, basics of backtracking here but what i mean to say keep two list okay one for zeros one for extras now pick one index pick the first position where you get zero like you can pick that's uh, that's uh, not relevant that in which order you pick but suppose i pick this one okay now what i'll do okay now what i'll do i'll try to place a one here first using this position and then using this position if i place a one using this position this guy becomes zero this guy becomes one right now this is the new configuration of my grid now what i'll do i'll go to the next position now when i go to the next position again this guy has two options one is this one where you have two stones and second is this one getting it again you explore one of the possibilities suppose i pick from here so this becomes one this becomes one then for this guy okay then for this guy now just see what has happened now initially you had two extra cells but now this one has only one cell only. sorry this one has only one stone only only one stone left so that means you will not be transferring a stone from here to here now you just have a single possibility so you transfer this becomes two this becomes one now this one has only again for the same reasons just one option this becomes one this becomes one so what we'll do this was just one of the possibilities right we, this was just one of the possibilities and in this we will calculate the answer now we'll explore the other possibilities what will be the other possibilities this was the last step i performed right i'll go back the last step was transferring a stone from here to here i'll go back <clears throat> is there any other step possible no again go back is there any other step possible no go back come here is there any other step possible yes i transferred one stone from here to here let's not do that rather let's transfer one stone from here to here okay okay so this guy will have two stones this will have one stone okay let me just erase it to give you a feel of how this is happening so in the second possibility this will have two this will have one this will have one this will be zero only this will be two because the one stone is transferred like this now again go to the next step right it's basically sort of a stack right again now for this case my friends you have two possibilities this one and this one so now i'll explore this possibility that one stone here and one stone here and then this guy will have only one stone from here so what's the difference between the first and the second step that this stone initially came from here now it is coming from here and this stone initially came from here now it is coming from here so this is how you will explore the all all the possibilities and in this case the answer is four it gives you the moves but i hope you got a feel of how this will happen right as i told the constraints are low so this is it is more of an implementation based problem so this is a very small code i'll just show you how this works not complex very easy let's see that okay i create two list zeros and extra 
why i have taken a pair because i'll be, i'll be keeping the coordinates right x and y coordinates for each and every cell uh, which has zero or has extra right create the array list traverse the matrix if this is zero add them in the zeros list if this is extra that means if the number of stones in that particular cell is more than one add that into the extra simple this is just about the uh, you know collecting the metadata to solve the problem okay we are done now we'll call the core function which solves the problem you pass the grid Achha, why do we pass the grid? because whenever you perform any operation right uh, yeah whenever you perform any operation the state of your grids change right so that's why grid zero is extra and this is zero why zero because i have these many zero cells so the moment i place value in all the zero cells i am done with that particular tree generation now i'll explore other possibilities right so that is why let's come here basic recursion and backtracking okay nothing fancy if current index equals to zero dot size so if i have five zeros so the indices uh and this will be from zero to four so the moment you reach index number five that means you have placed a stone at all these zero stones so great work just return zero in that case okay now comes the core logic what is the core logic just see this is the number of possibilities from where i can bring a stone extra dot size current zero x current zero y this is the these are this is the coordinate co coordinate where i have a zero and i am my target is to place a zero uh, sorry place a stone here okay answer is this now you must be thinking why i have written 10 raised to the power 6 here and not integer dot max here okay so the reason here is i'll just tell you the reason here is what happens now when you take integer dot max you can take it you'll have to add, add if and else checks why i am doing a step like this something plus this function value right this is true for most of the problems now if the function value you return is integer dot max so the integer value will overflow because in integer dot max even if you add one that will overflow the value will become negative and hence you'll get wrong answer because it, this will be a positive value and this will be a negative value so you'll you'll get wrong answer getting it so try to return a value even when you're returning a maximum value try to return a value such that even if you add something okay you it does not overflow that's the main reason so i have taken 10 to 6 you can say you take you can take 7 8 whatever you want ultimately it should not overflow okay now um what did i say that i'll explore all the possibilities all the cells which have extra uh, stones so i'll i'll explore these n cells this is the current x this is the current y means where you have extra cell so if that grid is still has extra stones now why i'm saying still because there's a backtracking problem you change the state so maybe now a cell which was having extra cells just have one stone right sorry a cell which has extra stones now just have one stone okay so that's why if it is still a cell having extra stones what you'll do decrement that or decrement the count because from that position i'm bringing a stone to this position and make the current zero while position as one because now you have one stone the state of the grid changes right now answer equals to math dot min of answer whatever is the current answer you calculated maths dot absolute value of current 0x current and current x means and plus current 0y and current y now what is this thing this thing is that i am bringing one stone from here to here what is the cost of bringing it this is the cost of bringing it plus now try placing the remaining stones at the correct position so just call the same function with correct index plus one because now i'll target the next zero so that i can have a one here right now once you are done with this i have to explore all the possibilities undo the operation what was the operation i did removed a stone from this position so add a stone there there then i added a stone here remove a stone from there simple backtracking okay and finally what you do you return the answer so for every possibility we'll be we'll be getting some answers and obviously at last we'll be getting the minimum answer right so yeah this is how you solve this problem i would say that um, the constraints were low so this problem was relatively easy and uh, yeah coming up with the solution is uh, something that can uh, you know you cannot come with that logic every time so i totally understand that but this is how you solve this problem whenever you see low constraints try to write a brute force code 
and just see that do you need to optimize it or will it pass so that's what we need to do in this case right i would say more of an more of an implementation based problem right so yeah i hope you learn something new from this video do support it by giving up a thumbs up do subscribe to the channel as well in case you have any queries related to the solution mention that in the comment section and i'll go through each one of them thank you take care bye bye